Good morning. If you're getting here early, please familiarize yourselves with the meeting's controls and we'll see you right around 1030. Thank you. Welcome to this morning's live event. I'm your host, Lenny Orlov. If you are joining us online, live or on YouTube, your mission is to try out the closed captioning feature by clicking on the year under the video and selecting one of seven languages, Arabic, Chinese, English, Korean, Russian, Spanish, or Vietnamese. This level of real-time captioning is not top secret, but it is exclusive to our department's virtual events. So, why did I just play the theme music from the hit movie and TV series Mission Impossible? 
Well, I was inspired by a colleague, Mary Pat O'Leary, who wrote an article about fall prevention in the monthly e-magazine Age Wise King County titled Mission Impo Mission, excuse me, Mission Possible Physical Activity Helps Prevent Falls. The magazine is published by the Seattle King County Advisory Council on Aging and Disability Services and features community and staff contributions on current topics such as voting rights and fraud and scam prevention among others. If you'd like to receive a copy of the magazine by email, fresh off the virtual press, you can subscribe by visiting hwisekingcounty.org. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, go ahead and click the subscribe button and enable notifications. Our channel is called Aging King County and it features recordings of these weekly virtual events and much, much more. Both subscriptions are free and we would love for you to join our virtual community of like-minded readers and viewers. Mary Pat's article is just in time for the National Falls Prevention Awareness Week. It mentions one of today's presenters, actually, Dr. Milton Curtis and his organization's Senior Safety Score. We'll hear from Dr. Curtis first, followed by Dory Gillum with a presentation on the importance of laughter. Our guests will each have a total of 15 minutes, 10 to present and five for questions. And in the interest of time, we ask that you go ahead and leave a comment right away with anything you'd like him to address, even while they're presenting. On the live show, each time we stop for the Q&A, we'll always go to the phones first, followed by as many online questions as we have time for. Part of that process, my City of Seattle colleagues, Andrea Yip and Michael Taylor Judd, will gather all of your input and pass it along to our guests who will either respond on the live broadcast or in the YouTube comment. What we'll do is basically post it with the YouTube video, notify our presenters uh, and ask them to respond. You also get the presenter's contact information in case you wanted to reach out directly. And with any questions related to aging or disability, we want to encourage you to please call 1-844-348 5464 and speak to a Community Living Connections Advocate. They can help locate a wide range of resources, including food and meals. The call is free, interpretation is available upon request, and services offered are professional, confidential, and most are also free of charge. Again, the number is 1-844-348-5464. You may also visit them on the web at communitylivingconnections.org to see the list of participating organizations in this network and learn about the full range of services available to you and near you. Again, communitylivingconnections.org. First up on today's program is Dr. Milton Curtis. Dr. Curtis has a medical degree from University of Washington Medical School. He has been in family practice for 17 years with Northwest Hospital in Lake City and for 17 and, and for 18 years in Kenmore with Evergreen Hospital, where he was a medical director for five years. Dr. Curtis is now retired from clinical care and has been a Kenmore City Council member since 2008, serving as deputy mayor between 2008 and 2011. Dr. Curtis has been married 46 years and has two children and nine grandchildren. He grew up in Fairbanks, Alaska, then Cheney, Washington, before moving to the Seattle area in 1973. Dr. Curtis enjoys gardening, including edibles such as figs and kiwis and flowering shrubs, especially if they smell good. <laughs> Dr. Curtis, thank you so much for being here today. 
Um, please uh, remember, and I think you did, uh, to unmute your microphone because you are now live on Close to Home. Good morning. This is Dr. Milton Curtis. Uh, as I, yeah, was mentioned, this is Fall Prevention Awareness Week in the state of Washington. So thank you for joining us today to learn some things on how you can prevent falls and injuries. Next. We'll start with some national information. So there are 52.6 million of us over age 65 and about 30% of us fall each year. That's one out of three. About 6% of people end up in the emergency room with an injury severe enough to be seen there. About two and a half percent actually end up being hospitalized. This is most often for hip fractures or head injuries. And unfortunately, about 70 seniors per day die related to those falls. It's a huge economic problem as well. It cost $50 billion in 2015, and it's expected to be $102 billion by 2030. That's only 10 years away. Next. So how did I get interested in fall prevention? So like was mentioned, I was a family medicine doctor for 35 years. I saw many stories of patients where things worked out well. I have uh, many patients, they retired, their kids were gone for the home, they downsized, got an independent living situation, did a lot of travel. I had other families, things didn't go so well. One example was a family that lived near, uh, near us here in Kenmore, and they were both in their 80s. He was a gardener and he fell and broke his hip. She had some dementia. They both ended up in a nursing home and they both ended up being forced to move out of their home. So everybody recognizes the importance of fall screening. The um, present requirement by Medicare is that for primary care doctors, each senior over age 65 that's seen at least once a year, they should get the falls questions. And those questions are, have you fallen twice or more in the last year? or have you fallen once with an injury? Now, in primary care, we could do the screening, but we really didn't have the tools or the assessment ability to find out what's the home environment like? How can we help people to prevent falls besides just the medical issues? Then from the personal experience, my dad was 87. He had a little dementia, and one day he was getting up uh, with his walker and he forgot to unlock the walker. So he was going one direction, his walker was going another direction, got tangled up, fell, broke his hip, and within two months, he'd passed away. When I was 65, I was up painting the eaves. I fell and broke my hip. So, so I know what I'm talking about here. So from my patient's experience and from my family experience, I developed the senior safety questionnaire and the senior safety score. So the questionnaire is just the specific risk factors for you. And then the score is just on an 18 point scale. How many uh, safety issues do you have that you can work on? Next. So how do you get your personalized senior safety score? It's very simple. It's online at www.seniorsafetyscore.org. It's very simple. For each question, most of the answers are yes or no. Summer, I don't know the answer. So the green is good, yellow is caution, and red is risky, just like the stoplights. It's quick. It takes about five or 10 minutes for the 18 questions. There's no charge. The survey be can be done by a senior, or if they're not computer savvy, anybody can help them do it. Your senior safety score and the recommendations will be sent to you as soon as you finish the survey. The results can be printed out and the website is secure. No information is shared with anyone. Next. So this is what it actually looks like. So this is the uh, uh, Medicare question on falls. I have a little paragraph that kind of explains why is this issue important? And then there's the green is good, red is bad. Next. So the 18 questions are divided up about one third medical, one third home related, and about one third personal habits. 
it's important that you work on all three. And that was my frustration as a doctor. I could work on the medical, but I had no clue how to help the other two areas. So I'll just briefly go through these. For the medical area, we talk about things like cataracts, arthritis that affects your balance, nerve damage from diabetes, strokes, bladder problems that make people get up a lot during the middle of the night, people with memory problems or dementia, that definitely have increased the risk of falls, such as with my dad. High-risk medications, there's something called the beers list. So this is a list of medicines that if you're over 65, you have more chance of complications or bad things happening. Now, most people don't have a clue if they're on a beers list medicine, but your primary care provider or your pharmacist will both know the answer to that. For osteoporosis screening, the bone density test is the gold standard. Everybody's health history is a little different, so ask your doctor when it's important to do that. For the home issues, for the entrance to the home, obviously if you have no steps, that's ideal. Walk straight in, nice and safe. If you have one or two steps, that's yellow. If you have three or more steps, that's the high risk area. How many stories do you have in your house? Ideally, you'd like your kitchen, living room, bedroom, bathroom, and laundry all on one level. So you don't have to go to another level to do those things. For many people, their laundry is in the basement or on another floor. The bathroom layout is important. Some people, their doors are too narrow and they can't get the walker through, or it's too small or crowded, so it's unsafe when they get in there with crutches or canes. For the bathtub, do you have to step over the tub to get in or can you walk in straight like a shower? For kitchen stove burners, people say, why is that on there? I heard many stories about people with those burn marks on their uh, pot holders. That can be a sign of forgetfulness. And again, like we talked about, memory increases the risk of falls. Home accessibility and layout. So I have three pictures and you pick one. One is the perfectly neat and tidy house. One is the kind of what most of our houses look like by the end of the week before we clean up on Saturday. And one is what my teenage son's bedroom looked like most of his younger days. Now, most falls occur either on stairs or in the bathroom. So that's a big focus. For personal habits, we talk about assistive devices. Could be a cane, could be a walker, now people say, oh, I don't use those. Yeah, but what if you had a, a hip replacement? What if you had a knee replacement? So there are certain medical reasons that you might use those just temporarily. Driving restrictions. Some people say, I don't drive at night. I don't drive when it rains. I don't drive on bad days. I only go where I know. Sometimes that could be from simple things like cataracts. That could be fixable. Fender benders. So again, if people are having a little more accidents with their car, that can go along with memory or attention. Small pets running around under feet. Having to get up to the bathroom in the middle of the night. I had one gentleman had to get up six times per night. Every one of those brings some risk with it. Alcohol intake. So if people drink alcohol over a certain amount, it decreases their balance and their judgment. Next slide. So you take the questionnaire, you immediately get your results. What do you do with them? So for the medical ones, print that score out. It'll give all the um, uh, specific risk factors with recommendations. Make an appointment with your primary care doctor to discuss the safety and fall prevention. So in my 35 years as a primary care doctor, I do not remember one single patient saying, you know, safety is really important to me. I'd like to make an appointment to figure out how to prevent that. That's sad. We need to change that. For risks related to the home environment, I have developed some projects. So one is things you can do for $100 or less. Projects you can do in two hours or less. So people think of projects as big projects that are a lot of work. I try to make these specific, simple, doable. And then for all of your risk factors, Review those recommendations, and over time, as you finish a few and make them better, uh, then you can move on and prevent more things. The goal is to maintain your independence at home. Next slide. Just to review a few of the simple recommendations. Improving lighting. 
This is really important. As we get older, our vision gets a little worse. So replace burned out lights. The low watt bulbs, now that we have LED lights in the old 25 or 60 uh, watt light bulbs, you can now get a brighter light. Put in night lights everywhere. In my uh, house, I have them in the bedroom, the hallway, the bathroom. I like the ones that just turn on at dusk. Some people prefer the motion sensing ones that turn on when you move in that area. Next slide. Another major area is improving the bathroom safety. So instead of the old overhead shower, we have to look up to wash your hair. A handheld shower is much safer. You can apply skid resistant strips in the bathtub or shower using a shower chair. So instead of standing to wash your feet, you can just sit down and be safer. Replace the standard toilet seat with a high rise seat. As we get older, our quads and hamstrings get weaker and getting out of low chairs is more difficult. Remove items that crowd the bathroom, small cabinets or other things. Remove glass shelves or anything with sharp corners. So if you do fall, it's safer. Next slide. Improving handholds, so grab bars, particularly important near the toilet or the tub, but for some houses, they, people need it along stairs or near the bed. The screw-on permanent grab bars are much safer than the suction ones. Whenever you have stairs, it's important to have a handrail on both sides so that you can grab both spots and be a little more safe. Now, for each of these areas, you noticed I put how long it will take and about how much it will cost. Next slide. So the goal is to create clear paths in your house and decrease the risk of uh, falls. Some simple things, remove loose rugs, remove extension cords, walk through your house and pretend like the power went out. How safe would it be to get from one room to the next? Next slide. So we have a website with a lot of information. I have a 10 minute video that goes over more of the medical aspects of falls. Beers list, I actually have some of those medicines listed there so you can look up and see if yours might be on there. We have videos and articles on stairs and ladders and bathroom safety. We have exercise programs. Now these are the uh, exercise programs that are proven to decrease the risk of falls. And then we have the home project list. Next slide. So in summary, there is no such thing as a low risk senior if one third of us are falling each year. The senior safety score is an easy to use assessment tool to identify your individual risk factors. Every single risk factor can be improved. You immediately receive specific recommendations to decrease your risk of falls and maintain your independence. The goal is to be preventive, not wait until you're having multiple falls and at increased risk. You can get your senior safety score today at www.seniorsafetyscore.org. And with some simple steps, you can be safer within a week. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Curtis. Uh, for your presentation. Let's find out what our viewers and listeners are saying. Doesn't look like we have any questions on the phones. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Michael to see if there's any questions uh, in our online live Q&A. Thank you, Lenny. Um, yeah, we have a couple of questions that are starting to come in. Um, first person asks, I get that I should talk to my doc if I fall, but what counts as a fall? <clears throat> like if I trip over the corner of my bedspread and land on the bed, is that considered a fall? So yes, a lot of people think that they have to totally fall onto the floor and break something, but anytime you change position quickly, something you didn't plan, so even if you turn around quickly and almost fall, catch yourself on the couch, that's still a fall. Thank you. 
Uh, next question we have is uh, wondering if it's possible to get a medical referral to an occupational therapist who can do a home evaluation and whether insurance would pay for that. If not, what is the best way that one can get a professional evaluation of, for home safety? So um, this, this is a bit of a challenge. So as a primary care doctor, I could do a home referral and with that home referral, you'd get the nurse, you'd get the occupational therapy, the physical therapist, <clears throat> you'd get a range of services. Uh, I know a lot of people are working on trying to get occupational therapy as a specific and individual referral. I don't think that's approved yet at the national level, but uh, it is a, a physician can at least get the full referral going. All right, thank you. Um, and uh, that that fills out the queue at the moment, uh, Lenny. Thank you, Michael. So uh, thank you all very much for uh, for your questions. If you think of any more, I believe uh, Dr. Curtis can stick around. And if we have time at the end, uh, if more questions come through. We can also put them up on on uh, on YouTube there, um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll go we'll go from there. So um, again, thank you, uh, Dr. Curtis. We will. Um, uh, Lenny, we, we have a question that just seems to have gotten in under the wire. Oh, wow. OK, that's great. Uh, glad to hear that and uh, turning it back over to you. Um, we, we have if we know that a family member is falling or has signs like dents and dings in their car, what are the next steps as a family member? Um, are there any tactful ideas for finding help if the family member doesn't realize the extent of their falls or is unwilling to talk about them? So I would recommend that you try to get the person to do the uh, senior safety score and put it in terms of we're worried about you. Say, well, the recommendation is everyone over age 65 should get this score and do this test because everybody can be safer. So I wouldn't point to them point to what's best practice for everyone. Thank you. All right. And one more that came in. One more question yep. here. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Michael. And after that, we're going to be moving right along. Yeah, we can pull one more here from the queue. Uh, do you find that older adults might have difficulty talking about falls virtually since many medical providers are doing telehealth visits right now? And do you have any tips for the person to share? So I've actually been surprised at how many seniors are becoming more involved. So I work with senior centers and uh, a few other places where I've seen more and more 80 year olds on Zoom and other places. But my program is designed so if people don't feel comfortable with the computer that a family member can just do it for them. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Curtis. Uh, again, uh, don't go anywhere. Stay in the in the virtual green room uh, in case there are more questions. Um, and um, uh, thank you for being here. Thanks for telling us about Senior Safety Score and for the work that you do and for the work that you've done uh, and sharing a little bit about that. Thank you we, for the opportunity to share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a pleasure having you uh, on the program. Up next, we will learn about the importance of laughter uh, wherever we may be on our life journey, especially now uh, during the global pandemic. And uh, next week, next Thursday, we will continue this conversation. Uh, it will be on October 1st, first day of uh, the next month. We'll talk about living well in these uncertain times and we'll check in with one of the founders of a community organization called Aging Wisdom, Lisa Mayfield. We'll also hear about the work of Seattle's Office of Labor Standards from their outreach manager, Darius Foster. To join at 10.30 a.m. Pacific, go to our virtual events hub at bit.ly forward slash agefriendlylive no spaces, but each word is capitalized. Just like you did today. 
As we continue with today's program, we'd like to offer you another resource currently available in 22 languages, coronavirus.wa.gov. That's Washington State's coronavirus response website. And according to that website, staying home is still safest. To ensure that our state's safe start is successful, we're all encouraged to stay as close to home as possible. But if we must go out, we are asked to please continue social distancing and wearing facial coverings, which are required statewide in public settings, both indoors and outdoors. Coronavirus.wa.gov has all the latest info on the state's response to COVID-19 in all these different languages. You can also call 1-800-525-0127 to reach Washington Department of Health Assistance hotline. Again, that number is 1-800-525-0127. So right now, let us continue with Close to Home stories of health, tech, and resilience. Our next guest is Dori Gillum. She's a speaker and a writer, inspiring older adults to age creatively. She writes for Third Act Magazine, is a member of the Speakers Bureau for Humanities Washington, board chair for the Northwest Center for Creative Aging, and we've had um, the director of that organization on one of the programs. We'll put a link up when you watch this on YouTube. And Dory is a charter member of the Age-Friendly Coalition for Seattle and King County. Dory was born in Seattle and has worked for Sound Generations, ARP, and the Bayview Retirement Community. Dory, I've uh, really enjoyed interacting with you over my now two and a half year tenure with uh, Age Friendly Seattle. Thank you for being here today. Um, I see that you have unmuted your microphone. Welcome to the show. You're live on Close to Home. Thank you for having me, Lenny. I really appreciate it. So today I will be inviting you all to consider a model for aging with purpose and laughter and learning. So let's first start with birthday cards. Next slide, Lenny. This birthday card says being one day older only matters if you're a banana. Happy birthday. I like these kinds of cards much better than the kinds of cards that make fun of being old, uh, make fun of aging, like those that talk about, I can't see, I can't hear, I can't remember, I can't think, I can't walk. Um, let's actually celebrate our birthdays in, instead of making fun of aging because we're all doing it. Next slide, Lenny. So to age creatively and with purpose, I think we should have more fun. Um, George Burns is here in this slide saying, if you live to be 100, you've got it made. Very few people die past that age. Thanks, George. <laughs> Next slide, please. And don't you feel best when you're laughing with a friend or your family, laughing till you can't breathe? These two Native American women are clearly cracking each other up. And if you haven't done that in a while, and I know it's tough with the pandemic and uh, political unrest, but let's find a way to laugh until we can't breathe um, safely um, as often as possible. Next slide. So where did I learn the most about aging with fun? I learned it from my parents. And this is Ralph and Clara. Um, they were married for over 70 years, and they lived to be 95. He died just 30 days after she did. They were madly in love, and they had a sense of humor. They really believed if you can laugh through it, you can live through it. And here's what I learned. Next slide, please. Uh, purpose, learning, and laughter is what they kind of followed. They did not teach me this, but I gleaned it from working with, uh, living with them for six years as their caregiver, and also, of course, growing up with them. Um, and so here's what I have found out. Uh, next slide, or next, please. <clears throat> uh, 
experts and doctors, therapists, psychiatrists, scientists will say that everyone needs these four things to be happy and healthy as they live and as they age. Everyone needs something to do, something to look forward to, something to believe in, and someone to love. In fact, they go as far to say, if you don't have two of those things, no matter what, how old you are, no matter what age you are, you can be at risk for depression uh, because these are very important to all of us. And I always have to add one more. So next, Lenny, I think we should all have something to laugh about and that's how we can be healthy. Next, so let's break these down one at a time. I think everyone needs to have something to do. Next, please. <clears throat> when I ask people, what will you do when you no longer work to live? Some people call it retirement. Some people call it just not getting paid anymore. And a lot of people say to me, oh, Dory, are you kidding? I'm going to lie on the beach. Well, if you have retire at age 65 and you have maybe 10 or 15, 20, or maybe even 30 years left to live, like my parents did, you can't really lie on the beach for 20 or 30 years because the problem with doing nothing is you never know when you're done. So I like to say to people, what are you going to learn? Who will you teach? Because you'll have plenty of time to lie on the beach. Next. <clears throat> Here's a slide of Albert Einstein sticking his tongue out. And his quote is, creativity is intelligence having fun. And I think we need a lot more of that, that's for sure. Next. I believe every person has gifts of the head, the heart, and the hands. And we've gleaned the, or we've uh, collected these gifts throughout our entire lives. There's no reason to stop giving them just because we stop working for pay. So for example, gifts of the head are your knowledge, your intelligence, your all the skills that you have, your wisdom. And you may not have been an official teacher in your career, but you can still give those gifts to other people. We all have gifts of the heart. That's our compassion, our ability to help other people, to be of service, to have empathy. You certainly can give that no matter how old you are. And then gifts of the hands. I don't have too much of this, but many people have the ability to build things, build a fence, to construct something, to engineer, architects, or people who can bake, who can sew, who can do art, uh, make art. I say do art because I don't do art very well, but to make art, make pottery. And these are all gifts that you have and you can continue to learn new skills in each of these areas. So that's part of where the learning comes in as we get older. Next. Now we come to something to look forward to. Next. George Burns again. I look to the future because that's where I'm going to spend the rest of my life. Yeah, let's be careful. We want to certainly reminisce and think about our memories, but let's pay attention to what's happening next. And I think that here we go again with what are we going to do? What are we going to do next? And how are we going to help other people? Next slide. There's a calendar on this slide. And basically I'm saying, I hope, that each of you have plenty of things on your calendar that you want to do and that you look forward to doing. We all have things on our calendar, but make sure you have some things that are you know, red letter days that you can't wait till that day comes up or that time of the day. And you can plot as many of those things as you want to, to keep you looking forward to your life. Next slide. Next, we come to the third one, which is something to believe in. Now, this doesn't have to be a faith or a religion, although it certainly can be. It could be um, just a trust in a, a particular cause or a support for um, a charity um, or something you believe in the goodness of humanity. Next slide. Oops. Did you go backwards? There, no. Forwards, one more forward. <clears throat> there we go. So I support Habitat for Humanity and I believe in it. It's something I feel very strongly about that everyone deserves a decent place to live. So um, I do Habitat for Humanity builds all over the world. Um, here on the left, it shows me with a pickaxe breaking ground in India in a slum outside of Delhi 
to build a house. And on the right is a picture of a little four year old that we met in El Salvador when we were helping build a house there. So um, it could be anything that you believe in that it really keeps you moving through your life. Next slide. And the fourth thing in what most experts say are the four top ones is someone to love. Now this could be a romantic love. Next slide, please. Here are my parents' hands. Um, and this was when they were about 94 or 95, when, right before they passed. Um, they were madly in love, as I said. And, uh, and yet, um, I don't have a partner or a um, marriage partner, a spouse right now, um, but um, I have plenty of people to love. I have wonderful friends. I have a daughter, a grandson. I have amazing neighbors and I have cousins, nieces and nephews. And so think about all the people that you could collect in your life that you can love and that can love you. Next slide. And it doesn't have to be people. This is my my kitty Pearl and this is a picture I took last week on the Oregon coast and little cabin where we stayed for a week and um, I I really she's my buddy I, I say I love her she's my buddy but um, anything anything and anyone that you can pay attention to and 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 love I think that's uh, valuable in our lives next slide <clears throat> well now we're back down to the one that I add to this experts list something to laugh about I even wrote an article for Third Act magazine about this that makes it clear. I try to get something to laugh about it for 30 minutes every morning and 30 minutes every evening. So I actually, even if I've been looking at the news and um, uh, or listening to the news, um, I try to take 30 minutes and watch funny YouTube videos, whether it's comedy shows that, that are reruns that I used to love or comedy shows now, lots of great movies over the years, or it could be um, um, YouTube videos of funny animals, funny babies, anything that makes you laugh. Um, it could be calling a friend who you know you'll have fun with. But think about how you can get something to laugh about during your life. And uh, I try to start and end every day with that and take a little bit of a break from the news. Next slide. My mom definitely had a sense of humor, as did my dad, and she used to even joke about her death, and she would say she wanted her headstone to read, next slide, I told you I was sick. And we didn't do that, but she said it all the time. Next slide. This is my friend Sam Altman, actually my, my girlfriend's dad. Um, he recently passed in February, um, but um, I was talking to him and asked him, how'd you get to be 72 and have such a great, positive, fun life? Next, and Sam told me, your attitude is everything. You have to make living fun by being positive and looking forward to every day. Laughing helps overcome troubles. Next slide. Here's a picture of me on one of those horses where you put in the quarter and it kind of goes slowly, but it's like it's supposed to be bucking you off. Uh, this is my 65th birthday and my friend Bill took this picture and he actually did put the quarter in right then and I began to laugh. And my quote on this slide says, I don't know how to act my age. I've never been this age before. We need to throw out convention and not worry about our age and have more fun regardless of our age. Don't worry about looking stupid. A few people walked by me in the lobby of that restaurant uh, in Ballard and I didn't even see them, believe me. Next slide. So I challenge you, what kinds of things make you laugh? Think about it, write it down, F figure out what have, I, what have I been missing? And next, next Lenny, what can you do to find more fun? What are some things that you can add to your life to have more fun? Call that friend, call that brother who makes you laugh till you can't breathe. Okay, next. So I do believe this is true. Wrinkles mean you laughed, gray hair means you cared, and scars mean you lived. And this is a, this is a birthday card that I wouldn't mind getting because it's positive. Let's look at, um, I heard yesterday, wrinkles are containers for memories. So let's look at it more positively. Next slide. So here's our summary. Purpose, learning, and laughter contains, uh, this, mo or this model contains things including 
something to do, something to look forward to, something to believe in, someone to love, and something to laugh about. Next, which of these could you use more of? Next, and here's a picture of me four years old in my little uh, recital tutu with my underwear showing. But the, the caption says, we never grow up, we just learn how to act in public. <laughs> and that doesn't mean we have to abandon everything we are thinking of like to do and the ways we can have fun. Next slide. Thank you very much for having me and I'd be happy to take questions. Thank you so much, Dori. This so is much, great. Um, this is great. Um, you all couldn't hear me, but um, I was uh, laughing a lot during your presentation. Um, and um, well, let me now turn it over to Andrea um, and a reminder to everyone that you are muted unless you unmute yourself uh, to see if there is any questions in our online live Q&A. Thanks, Lenny. Yes, we do have one in the queue. Dory, is there an easy way for people who have never been involved in the community to get involved? The idea of a cold call to an organization is pretty intimidating. A cold call to an organization. Hmm. Uh, I don't I don't know that you necessarily have to do that, but in order to get involved in the community, you could um, ask your neighbors um, what they're up to, what they've been involved in. Uh, also a good way to get to know your neighbors. Um, and you can ask friends, relatives. Um, also, you can talk to the city. You can go to the city of Seattle um, uh, website and see what's going on, what kind of events are there that you could get involved with. The um, Department of Recreation, uh, uh, Lifetime Recreation for Seattle especially is wonderful. And the libraries, go out to any library website, whether it's a branch or whether it's Seattle Public Library or King County Library System and see what kinds of events and things they have going. And you'll find something that you can have fun at and uh, really connect with. Thanks, Dory. That's all. That's in the queue, Lenny. All right. Uh, thank you, Andrea. And uh, uh, well, the timing works well, um, Dory uh, and everybody. Um, I, I wanted to just respond to what I heard. Uh, I, you know, I haven't laughed that, this much um, during these shows, so I, I definitely thank you for that. Um, and I also I made a mental note, you, you know, you were saying get away from politics. The way I do that I, is I watch out. The only way I consume politics is through the shows that make fun of it. Um, and that way I, I still get updated, but at the same time I get some laughter in as well. Um, it's not for everyone, but you know, it, 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 it's, it's a way to do it. So again, thank you for being here. If folks think of more questions since we're out of time right now, uh, please go ahead and uh, type those in. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and post them on, on YouTube once this video is uploaded. Uh, and we'll ask Dory uh, and or uh, Dr. Curtis to respond. So uh, I'm going to uh, move us along to our last point in our journey today, which is thanks. Um, I'd like to thank Dory, of course, our, our most recent presenter and, um, and the one that made us laugh. Uh, unfortunately, now or fortunately, I'm not sure, but when we present, sometimes we don't get the feedback we would if we did a, a live in-person presentation. And hopefully those will be back pretty soon. Um, we uh, also want to uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Curtis, for talking to us about fall prevention. Not a laughing matter, but um, uh, important nonetheless. This is the fall uh, prevention week, so uh, it, seems timely that we talk about it and I kind of encourage you all to think about it. Most of all, we do want to thank you all for tuning in today, whether it was live um, and, and uh, maybe you're watching on YouTube. If you haven't already, please go ahead and um, uh, do us a favor. Uh, join our virtual community uh, of viewers and listeners and, uh, and laughers, if that's a word. You can do that by clicking the subscribe button uh, and clicking the bell. That way 
you'll know uh, the next time we upload something uh, onto our channel called Aging King County. Before you go, a quick reminder about the network of community organizations that the City of Seattle contracts with, Community Living Connections. You can call them with anything related to aging or disability, including questions about laughter, possibly, uh, you know, questions about uh, access to medical care uh, in, 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 you know, in terms of cost uh, of, of, of that, they have, uh, they have all the answers. Uh, and um, uh, they're available at 1-844-348-5464, or you can look online at communitylivingconnections.org. So I think it stopped raining out there, but one thing is for sure, the air is much clearer out there. So we hope you'll enjoy the fall outdoors with laughter, but without the risk of falling. Have fun, have a safe, uh, and fun weekend. We look forward to seeing you again and your friends at the next Age Friendly Seattle virtual event. Take care, y'all.